To get started with our morning session program, I would like to welcome Professor Steven Patterson, Chief Innovation and Entrepreneurship Officer at National University of Management and Coordinator of the Business Model Competition Cambodia to come on stage and present his opening remark and introduction to the judging panel. Thank you. So good morning, everyone, and welcome to season 12 of the National Business Model Competition, which is organized each year by NUM International College in partnership with the Japanese Education NGO, CSIF. So this year, we received 70 video applications uh, from more than 25 universities and schools from across Cambodia. And we selected the best 25 teams for our program. And last Sunday, we held our semifinal round where we selected the top 12. And so today, we have the top 12 teams competing in the finals. Uh, this year, uh, due to our ge the generous contribution of our sponsors, we will be offering $15,000 in prize money. Uh, divided up into five different prizes, including gold, silver, and bronze medals, and also innovation award and top social award. So the purpose of the business model co uh, competition is twofold. Uh, the first purpose is about talent, developing talent among Cambodian youth. And the second purpose is what we call the entrepreneurial mindset where we are trying to get young students uh, the, the sort of the way to think as an entrepreneur. Because often it's not maybe the idea that you're working on right now that will be successful, but if you learn the methodology and you get this sort of entrepreneurial mindset, we are hoping that maybe in five years time or 10 years time, as you get more experience and more resource, you become an entrepreneur, uh, you move into that space. And of course, we're also a big believer in entrepreneurship, that you can train young people to be entrepreneur, they can then work at corporations, and they can be creative and proactive in those organizations, using the money of those organizations to launch new products, new services, and develop new business models. So the whole entrepreneurship is vital to what we are doing here. Uh, again, this is not a business plan competition. This is a business model competition. So, so basically, what is the difference? We're trying to teach the methodology, the lean startup methodology, how to validate your ideas. Many of your ideas are just theoretical hypotheses. They are guesses. And so you have to get out of the building and talk to real customers and experts and stakeholders to validate and test your ideas. So we're very focused on method. It's not falling in love with this great idea. It's did you actually get out of the building, speak to customers, run experiments, develop prototypes, and test your ideas. So methodology for us is very important in this competition. Uh, in terms of rules and regulations, each team will have 10 minutes to deliver their presentation, plus uh, 10 minutes of Q&A from our distinguished judging panel. So let me start by introducing our judges today. Um, our first judge, Mr. Takaharu Mitsukoshi, CEO of Forvolt Cambodia. <laughs> Ms. Dina Kunmar, Managing Director, Total Energies Cambodia. Mr. Matthew Rendell, Senior Partner, Soxipana and Associates, Zico Law. Mr. Pen Chanda, Chief of Party, USA Digital Workforce Development Project. Ms. Zoe Ning, Co-Founder of Raintree. Ms. Hangchun Narita, Head of Corporate Banking at JTrust Royal Bank. Mr. David Shelters, Entrepreneur in Residence at Mekong Strategic Partners and Dr. Kim Ling, director of CJCC. So I wish all the team success in their presentations today, and now let me pass it back over to our MC. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Steven Patterson, for your kind remark to get the event started. Moving along with our agenda, I would like to invite our first BMC team from Southeast University of Science and Technology and CAMAP Business School to come on stage and present their pitch to the audience. Please welcome CAMTech. Thank you.
While the team are getting ready for their presentation, I would like to explain a few rules to our audience and a reminder to all of our BMC team and judges as well. Each and every team will have 10 minutes to finish their presentation, and the judges will have 10 minutes for the Q&A session. Our timer will ring the bell once. When you have one minute left to wrap up, when the team ring the bell twice, it means your time is up. We would like to ask everyone to kindly respect the time given to you. If not, our volunteer will have to take matters into our own hand to ensure that our program is moving forward smoothly as scheduled. Thank you very much. So, we'll start it now. Good morning, respected judges, ladies, and gentlemen. I would like to ask, what stands out the most for you when you see this picture? Angkor Wat Temple. Khmer ancient temples are one of the most important heritage which represents Cambodia and contribute 39% in the service sector of Cambodia's 2019 GDP, a data from Starista. I remember one time during my high school trip, I went to Bakhang Temple, and all I saw was damaged temple. Furthermore, there are so many other destroyed temples which we often overlook. Of course, there are several factors affecting the temple, such as weather, human, deterioration, and nature. According to the Ministry of Culture and Fine Art, has stated that there was a strong wind causing the tree to collapse, damaging the structure of the temple. So, how can we solve this problem? Let me introduce you to Chemtech. Chemtech is a business idea that aims to preserve and upgrade Cambodia's ancient temples using two main innovations. First, the Chemtech machine, and second, the Chemtech application. Chemtech machine consists of two core components such as scissors lift and laser projector. Laser projector can display the temple structure on a transparent glass symmetric with the temple at the site by filling out the missing part of the temple so that you can see how the temple originally looks like. And here is our short video of the Chemtech machine's components. Second, the Chemtech application. Chemtech application consists of five functions, such as augmented reality technology, which you can zoom in, zoom out, rotate the structure of the temple, the 3D and the video talking about the history of the temples, audio and text translated in varieties of languages. We do this because we want all the customers and people have the better understanding and overview of the history of the temple and we would like to preserve the temples for the future. 
our business process is really simple. First, you just have to purchase our activation code at the uh, temple site. Then you can use it to access to our application and our machine. Finally, you can enjoy exploring our innovation and temples freely. This is our initial business model canvas. We will first start by validating our customer segment. But we have some problems, such as we don't know the difficulties when visiting the temples, we don't know who is exactly our customer, and does our value proposition fit the customer demand? So we went to SimRip to conduct a survey on the 5th of February. And he is our activity, did the survey with the tourists. And some of the tourists, they claimed that they didn't see the structure of the temple clearly. They also didn't want to run the tour guide. And as a result, we have, got the, we have known that the results of the uh, local tourists, they are highly interested in our innovation. They are willing to pay and willing to use. The same goes to the international tourists. After doing the survey, we have encountered many problems, such as they have no idea about the original structure of the temple, they can't go into the prohibited area, and so on. But these problems can be solved by our business idea. So that means that our business idea can fit with the customer demand. However, this survey alone cannot help us to determine our customer segment. And that's when our journey continues. We met up with the ministry in order to ask them to be our customer by offering them two main options. First, they can purchase our innovation. Second, they can give us commission. Unfortunately, they rejected to be our customer. And that's when we update our customer segment by focusing on local and international tourists instead. We also give the value to the customer by giving better understanding and experience to the tourists. This value will be delivered to customers through channels such as at the temple site, social media, and the list goes on. On top of that, we also added the machine maintenance and application update to our customer relationships as well. Our journey did not stop here. We went on to seek for partnership in order to um, build our machine and projector. We first met with PGR manager of Shimong Industry. However, we rejected us they rejected us because he told us that it was not a focus of Shimong industry. Then we continued to meet with a professor from Sussex University of China, in which he claimed that it is possible to build, to build our prototype because the technology already exists. But what about the structure of a temple? What should we do? And that's when we went and meet with the architect. Both of them mentioned that they are willing to partner with us and help providing the needed material for our innovation. They also give us some feedback on our machine, such as the function, the design, the balance of the user, and also the technical views as well. Taking into account the concern, we have re-updated our machine by adding the handle so that you can stand and hold on it when the scissor lift lifts you up so you, you won't lose your balance. And also, we relocate the laser projector to make it more convenient. After meeting with our key partner, we also learned that in order to show the structure of a temple into 3D and 2D, we would have to base on research and a lot of um, the document from the past. And that's when we realized that we encounter another problem, the lack of original structure of a temple. In order to solve this problem, we met with the ministry. Although they rejected to be our customer, but they are willing to partner with us. Absa Authority also mentioned that uh, we can help we can solve this problem by going to some particular location that they recommend. We were recommended to go to uh, FOO, which is uh, located in CMBF, the CMBF Center Library, in which they have the relevant documents that are useful for our innovation. On top of that, they also give us some feedback regarding the size of the machine. The block, um, it can block the tourist view, security, and also immobility as well. In order to solve this problem, we again update our machine by adding the wheel so that it is movable and also making it adjustable by making the glass foldable. And here is the final look of our final machine. 
it didn't end here. We still have to validate our applications. So we went now to seek for partnership with tour guide, AR, and IT experts. The tour guide gave us advice on the resource of the history and documents which are useful for our applications and our machines. While for the AR experts, he explained about the process and clarified that our business idea is possible. However, there are some concerns. So the problem with our application is lagging and no internet connections. But we can solve it by creating an offline application instead. We didn't give up, but continue to meet with IT teams. They stated that our application is possible, however, they turned us down because it is beyond their skills and scope of works. So they recommend us to go to B Solutions and the Core Webs. Both companies stated that um, our application is possible. However, B Solution turned us down because they are now focusing more on e-commerce app. So the Core Web was added to our models, and then we also meet with Mr. De Damien Evans the directors of uh, LIDAR Cambodia, in which he agreed with us. And he also, also mentioned about the possibility of underground scannings of the temple to see the temple structures. However, the cost is a little bit of an issue. And then the LIDAR scanning cost and commission to the ministry is added to our model as well. This is the rough estimations of our cost structure and which is around um, $15,600. And these costs are estimated per location except for the app creators. As for our revenue streams, uh, we will get the revenue from selling the tickets to both locals and international tourists with a price range that is based on our surveys. This is our key activity and key resources. And here is our final business canvas. But we are not going to stop here. Adding our innovation to museums, adding mixed reality to our innovations, and going nationwide and worldwide is our future visions. We, Camtex team, are willing to preserve the beauty of the temples. In the near future, we hope that we can launch this business idea and help preserve the temple structures across Cambodia. So join us to help preserve our heritage all together. This is a short video of how our machine works. And this is the tutorials on how to use our applications. Thank you. Thank you, team, for your wonderful presentation. We will now be starting the Q&A session. Is it OK for us to take our mask off? Sorry. So um, um, it seems like you're, you're making the assumption that this product is the only option for, for the customers and also for Apsara Authority. Um, um, have you, when you uh, researched with the customers, did you offer several different options? Uh, so, so one option is this big, big machine that they have to stand, in, uh, stand on at each temple. Yes. Um, um, did you uh, check with them to see, well, first of all, the Apsara Authority, would, would they accept that having that big bulky machine uh, in, 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 the, in the park grounds. And number two is for the customers, um, is, would that be, um, would they prefer just having a mobile app where they can point it or, or the, with GPS, they can look at a, 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 a monument and they can just see a snapshot of, of, that, uh, of that picture. Was there any research done on other options besides this, uh, this uh, large machine? Um, uh, 
Um, thank you, churches, for the uh, questions. So I would like to answer the qu first questions, which is about uh, what option did we offer to Absar authorities? So when we have a meeting with them um, and ask them to be our customers, we actually gave them two options. First is to uh, purchase our innovations, and second option is to give us commissions, which means that they can uh, like take uh, the um, machines there and then give us back commissions based on the uh, ticket that they uh, have sold. And on top of that, um, they also mentioned the size of the machine. So we have redesigned our machine to be smaller so that uh, we can put it there. And if they reject our um, proposal, we also have a meeting with uh, the Ministry of Culture and Fine Art. And he stated that their allocation that we can uh, do this and he also encouraged us to do it as well because those temples are not well known to people so he wants to introduce it and also promote it as well uh, such as um, Prasad Bhatti uh, at the Gao province as well and regarding the question about our um, um, customer choice we already explained them that they have two options they can use the machine to see the structure of a temple at the site or they can use their phone in order to add more value to that by looking at the video, the audio, or the text. So first, they would have to purchase the activation code in order to get access to both the machine and our application. And we already explained it to them, and they stated that they are willing to pay at a price range that we have shown for local customers, $3 per day, for uh, like all the area in Angkor Wat. And also, um, for a foreign customer, they can uh, pay us $8 on top of entrance ticket. They said they are willing to pay, but it's for one day and using all uh, the innovation in Uncle area. Thank you. Oh, good morning. Good presentation, by the way. Um, I have a question about the problem that you identified and the way you phrase it, because when I first saw that logo, preserve the beauty of the temple, of temple, um, I thought you were saying at the beginning that your problem was the preservation of the temple, the fact that it was deteriorating, this, that, and the other. So I thought you were going to talk about a business model that some way, somehow, assisted in preserving the temple. But I, I don't think that's a problem. But it seems to me what you're saying is because the temples have collapsed, you don't know what they originally looked like. So this is helping customers see what it would have looked like had it not collapsed. So, so, so can you tell me what, what, how you phrase the problem that, that you think you've identified? Is it preserving the temples or is it assisting customers like me who wouldn't know what it originally looked like by showing them what it originally looked like? And if it's the second one, I think you need to change your, uh, your logo, I think. Um, yes. Um uh, for our business, we would like to preserve uh, the structure of our temple. And as you have already mentioned, that some, uh, some temple, they already collapsed. Uh, so uh, it, is, uh, like it is not easy to actually build the temple again and also uh, making it like the original structure in real life, like building it, because it might uh, affect the originality of the temple. And that's why our business idea focused on observe, uh, preserving the uh, temple by showing the original structure. And on top of that, we also think that it can give value to the future as well. For example, if we are not able to find the original structure of a temple, and then we can keep the data of what the uh, temple look like in, in present so that we can use it in the future for the next generations as well. So, so, so you're not saying that by using your machine and standing a fair way away from the temple, huh? Um, are you saying that they won't therefore be going to the temple and causing more damage because they're using your machine? Is that, is that how you're preserving the temple? Is, is that the point? Um, thank you, sir, for your questions. Uh, so actually, um, they can still go to the temple, visit um, the temple site, but our innovation is mainly focused on um, showing them the original structures of the temple because like, um, Back to uh, Satya, one of my teammate um, story. When he go to visit uh, Bakhain Temple, he cannot clearly see the structure of the uh, temple, like because the top of the temple is already gone. Yeah, and also the machine will be po uh, put far away from the um, um, temple so that you can clearly see the whole structures of the temple, how it really look like, and it's 
um, there is no impact toward the uh, temple as well. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Yes. And I'm glad that you're as excited about Simrup and Angkor as I am. My question is, did you research any other apps or technology that are being used around the world or at any other historical site to help you define your business model? Um, actually, yes, we did some research about the, our applications because like what's your reality is already some technology that uh, is already exists and um, we think that um, our technology is uh, going to be possible because uh, it's nothing new, it's something that's already exists and we can recreate it um, and preserve the structure of the temple using our application as well. Also, virtual reality is our uh, future as well, uh, like how people can um, actually stay in their place and then use our innovation to see what it's like in Angkor just like what Meta is doing. And also regarding uh, the new technology, we also uh, sent an email to uh, the Cleveland Museum, Museum of Art, which is located in the US, and they are doing an in innovation where people can see uh, the temple and also the statue uh, in the museum, but in 3D. And it's also our vision uh, in order to partner with them as well. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, quick question. Do you have any simulation about the financials? Because the, at the end of the presentation, it's very impressive, but uh, it takes a time for each person, international travelers or local person to use this machine. I don't know how long it takes. Five minutes, one minute, 30 seconds, 10 minutes, I don't know. But uh, it seems we need to set up uh, this machine for each big temples. And then the machine is not so cheap. So I'm very much interested in knowing like uh, what kind of the financials can support your assumption like uh, entry fees or usage fees or all these things. Do you have uh, any, any simulations? Um, actually, um, we already like uh, have partnership with Ministry of Culture and Fine Art and they agreed to be our partner and they are going to support us and um, like um, both financial and yes. And um, And um, for uh, the period that the each customer or uh, the tourist will visit the temples, it may take only 30 seconds to 45 seconds. And of course, uh, I think this is not a major problem at all because actually it's simply uh, people have to wait in order to use the innovation. So um, yeah, uh, we actually have to wait for like two minutes or five minutes. If the rest, they can wait, they can also use our application instead. So, for example, while they are waiting, they can just uh, scan the QR code or use our uh, apps first, and then they can use our innovation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Camtech, for your wonderful presentation. <laughs> Due to the late absence of our second team, uh, Sugar Pack, we would like to take a short 10 minute break for coffee, waiting for the team. If they don't arrive within 10 minutes, we'll move forward to our third team. Thank you.
in IFL University. Thank you. Hello, hello, testing. So good afternoon, respective judges, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Vimo, and it's been 11 years now since I got my first period. But I'm not here to crumble my period, about my period crumbs and pain. But I'm here to make a confession that I've been guilty of polluting the environment more than men do. So do you know that in average, a woman uses around 15K sanitary pads in a lifetime? And because uh, one pack of sanitary pads is equal to four plastic carrier bags, that's why it is equivalent to a woman produces around 6K plastic bags. And not to mention that most sanitary pads takes up to 800 years to decompose. So our dear women, menstruation is natural, but why aren't we disposing them in a natural way? Besides the plastic problems, uh, according to Kenoma 2020, the sugarcane plantation and banana plantation keeps on increasing, which means that there is an excessive agro waste that are thrown away without any good use. We have also interviewed our farmers from Kampa province and found out that the farmer sometimes all even slipped down because the, the, lands was, the land with the banana fertilizer was fairly slippery. So this is the way that he lose his productivity as well. And another one is that he said that he had to let his banana dry first before he could have this land for agricultural use. So going to the customer's problem, because our deep interest in the menstruation topic, we have also done a market research and found out that 44.5% of 101 survey women has irritation. And of course, menstruation is still a taboo topic in Cambodia. And this results in the lack of menstruation knowledge. And this, of course, which in turn can adversely affect women's health. So with the problems arisen, we would like to introduce you to Sugar Pad, a biodegradable sanitary pad made by upcycling agro waste as our raw materials and in order to promote the natural menstrual cycle and eliminate uh, feminine irritation. So this is our BMC before hypothesis. We think that our unique value propositions are uh, irritation-free, organic, biodegradable packaging. So we tested our value proposition by conducting uh, various research on the publications and also interviews with the doctors and found out that actually irritation is caused during the period by the plastics that contain at the top layer, which is called acquisition layer, also because of the fragrances as well as the personal hygiene of the person. So uh, menstruation knowledge man management is one of the contributing factors. So testing another value proposition, we had also done online survey, online in-depth interview, and face-to-face -face interview. And we found out that all of them are super supportive of our idea. However, along the journey, we found out that 70% of them are afraid holding the pads in public. So, uh, and, and another one is that um, they complain about the smell and the effects of the improper disposal that happened to them after they got out of the toilet. And then, it is quite a contradictory to find out that actually 60% of them, they uh, discard their used pets with the new wrap, with the new wrapper. So that means uh, they are disposing it in an improper way. So we try to bring out a solution, which we uh, try to design an envelope here so that there's no smell, there's a proper disposal. And we took this prototype as well as the envelope to do a testing with, a, with 10 sensory people, and then we found out that seven out of 10 find our product acceptable. So, but at the same time, we also realized that they are not very happy with our uh, envelope being paper because they think that it is too bulky for them it, and it's very difficult for them to buy in a high dose. So they recommended us to change it from uh, paper to bioplastics. So that's all about value proposition. Let's move on to customer segment. So now you are clear about value proposition. So let's go to the customer segments. Um, our period women are our uh, target customer segments. So we asked around uh, 15 uh, high school students 
our face-to-face -face interview, and most of them are interested in our environmental concept, but uh, we can kind of conclude that there are no purchasing powers for purchasing the pets. So uh, we can conclude that they are not our target customer. And same for our uh, in the interview face-to-face, -face, um, some of our uh, customer testimonials uh, said that they are want to help the environment, but they're lazy. And uh, order they show about their guilty uh, concern. And here come the result that our target customer uh, have a uh, female age from uh, 23 to 30, 30 to 45, and they, uh, they had a web head job, self care, and social uh, active years old. And here's a word cloud from uh, our target customer. And how can we return our relationship with them? So, uh, after uh, studying about their uh, common characteristic, we uh, get to know our customer that they uh, need is uh, uh, menstruations, um, menstruation knowledge. So we plan to uh, uh, conduct uh, educational content through the social media and uh, the workshop. We also keep uh, one. We also assign put one persons for. Uh, for, uh, to convert to the, un the underprivileged woman and uh, innovative uh, research centers. And here's the key resource. So thinking about our key resources, of course we have to think about the key partners. So we have contacted several suppliers and found out that um, we think with the expectation in our mind that we can get the raw material for free. But then when we uh, interviewed with the farmers and also the director of Long Maker LTD, uh, whose name is Hon La, so he said that actually they can give us the raw material for free. However, under one condition is that they provide us the transportation. Uh, we have to have our own transportation to handle them. And he, uh, Mr. Long made a company also uh, said that he is interested in our project. And he says once it's solidified, he would not hesitate to make an investment in us. So we pivot from getting raw material for free to considering about the transportation costs as well. And another one, for the sugarcane part, we have also uh, contacted the sugar, cane, the sugar company. However, it is sadly that we realize that they cannot provide us the supply that we need because they harness their own waste energy to make it into the heat up plant. So while at the same time, the sugarcane juice seller has to spend around 3,000 real per day on discarding their own agro waste. So this is our key partners and uh, key resources updated. So after covering all the uh, resources, now we finally can activate our key um, activity. So uh, here is our, um, uh, this is how, uh, how we uh, conduct our experiments, how we conduct our uh, prototype. So firstly, from the raw material, so uh, we uh, collect it, we prepare our uh, raw, raw material by drying it and cutting it into, into the small pieces. For the cellular extractions, we prepare it by using the uh, alkaline treatment method. And then we bleach it to remove the lignin. And finally, we compress it and sub-boil it into uh, ones, and then we pack it into the beautiful packaging design. So here is a new, uh, is a cut structure. So for the revenue stream, it starts from uh, $2.6 to $3 of the end user with the margins of 40%. And in this generation, we believe that our product can be sold online. However, we conduct the uh, interview and all sorts of ways, and we realize that 90% of them bought physically. So we pivot uh, from online to offline. So here is our last test BMC. And in the future, we aim to uh, be a pro uh, cellulose provider and also a uh, diaper, <coughs> tissue, and utility uh, producer. Um, not clear, 
surely we cannot uh, thank enough to our mentor who provide us uh, a good um, technical um, advice and also the business ones. So here is our teammates uh, with the various um, interests on the change, changing the menstrual menstruation uh, system in Cambodia to betterment uh, of the women and also the environment. Thank you. Let, uh, sugar pet, let your menstruation change the world. Thank you. Thank you, Sugar Pad, for your wonderful presentation. That was very inspiring. Next, we would like to welcome the judges for the Q&A session. Thank you. Um, I, I have a question that actually uh, concerns the research on the, on the business model and customer segments uh, together. So you have incumbents. Uh, you're, the market you're going into, you have co competition. You have traditional pads, which are usually at a lower price point, but doesn't have much of the benefits that you offer. Then you also have organic pads, which offers many of the similar benefits that sugar pads offers, but it's at a higher price point than the traditional pads. So um, were you, when you went to the customers, did you present kind of like a competitive merit matrix? Like, here are the three pads. Here are the price points of the three pads. And these are the benefits. For example, a benefit of sugar pads over the organic pads might be uh, the sugar pads has you know that, that more sustainable packaging. Uh, so. so uh, me, it's really important to see kind of like, because you have competition, how it's, it stakes up, not just the benefits that you have. Um, um, so thank you for your questions. Um, for this part, um, as you can see that there's a, a availability of the Alconet pad on the market. However, the price of the Alconet pad is too high comparing to us. Um, on the market, the cheapest one is $4, and the highest one is $10. And comparing with us, we only sell it $3, and our product is um, nationally product. As you can see on the um, slide, that we also did the comp uh, competitor analysis. And we strongly believe that our product can be uh, penetrated into the market, and everyone will support it due to the um, the value proposition, such as the adaptation free, biodegradable, discrete packaging, and also the price is much better than everyone else. Thank you. I just want to add one more thing because I didn't connect with the customer segment. So, with the customer segments, this is actually illuminating too because you can have different price points of your product, right? So, you can say, okay, we're going to have we're going to have a price point where it's not sustainable packaging. You know, it's just the, the pad, or we can have it more. So you have di different demographics, different customer segments might be looking at different price points, you know. Uh, so, so this is kind of like, I think, really good research uh, to go into uh, and really um, and look at it, because that, that might reveal some of your, your customer segments as well, because you're in a competitive environment. Thank you for your recommendation. Hi, good morning. Morning. Uh, very interesting presentation. Thank uh, you. Yeah, and of course we can relate to it. <laughs> and uh, linking actually, uh, it kind of, I had a similar question on the investment part, uh, because at the end of the day, yes, you have the cost, uh, but in Cambodia itself, have you found out that uh, in terms of having the machinery, the site, everything set up, uh, do, have you uh, actually found partners where you have, um, because you talked about logistics where you have to do your own logistics. Then all the compression and everything, all of that requires investments. Have you actually talked to already any companies or NGOs who are willing to set up these things? Or have you talked to, in fact, the companies which are currently producing your traditional pads at the moment? Not the organic one, but the traditional ones. Have you had any discussions with them? Um, yes. So regarding to the machineries, we have contacted Mr. Um, Sochit from MG. So his process is actually similar to mine, to ours, um, because he extracts the sugar cane, um, the sugar cane cellulose into plate, and it's quite similar. So we uh, we also talked to him and learned about his process and figure out that maybe we can follow his step and then do some alteration. So for the machines, we have already uh, searched through online to Alibaba and found out that actually. Um, 
for um, the, the conventional ones, they have their own machines. And it's quite easy because it's, it comes with a pad roll. So things would be like one pad, two pad, three pad, and then they clumped it together. But for us, we, we, uh, we have to create our own machines. And yes, and we think that we can pro, uh, create our own machines um, via our own local um, machines maker. And we have also uh, asked um, our mechanic engineer uh, senior uh, from ITC and also uh, the, teacher, the teacher from there. And they said that actually our project is feasible. They can make the machine happen. That is good uh, presentation. Yeah, Thank I you. hope that the project could come true. Yeah. Yep. Yes. And actually, I have a question related to the supply chain as well, as well as the partner. I think that this project is quite good already. And I wish to learn from you whether you conduct analysis on the cost of the product compared with the price that could introduce to the market. Because as the entrepreneur, we must make sure that we could produce the good pro uh, product with the profit that we could make the business sustain as well. Um, yes, so surely we have to do a market um, research and yeah, on the shelves of our, the marts, the supermarkets, and we can see that um, actually like the customers, they do not know much about the biodegradable. It seems like it's a completely a very new idea to them because on the shelves, there's no such value proposition uh, proposed yet. And they only have organic. However, the organic is very expensive. It's like four to seven dollars. But since we locally produce, we can make it only three dollars. So this could be our winning, winning point. And Yes, it's always our mission to uh, promote uh, the environment conservation so that people can use it in their daily life without polluting the environment and with the affordable price. Um, moreover, as uh, we have mentioned before, that our raw material is free. However, we only spend on the uh, transportation fee. So we have calculated all the financial that we have to expand and um, the some uh, like the variable cost, operational cost, and so on. So we think that we can uh, like um, break events in next two years. I want to ask a question about the product itself because you talk about two things. You say one of the reasons is environmental, right? It's biodegradable, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But you also mentioned irritability of the user, and you said it also addresses that problem. So I want to ask about, you mentioned that you interviewed 101 people and 70% and said they found the product acceptable, right? Which means 30% said they did not find it acceptable. Did you ask them what was wrong with the product in their eyes? That's quite a big number, 30%. Uh, and secondly, it's, it's a related question. Because it's a product and irritability is what I'm getting at, do you need this approved by any authorities before it goes to market? I mean, obviously, it's, it's sort of a pseudo-medical product in a, in a way. So can you just put anything out, or do you need to get this approved in case it does cause problems? So has it been tested scientifically, so to speak? Thank you. Yes. So since I remember the second question, so I would like to answer it first. So um, yeah, surely, because our product is categorized as the health product. So we have to get a patent, we have to get the, the, the our product tested so that it's safe for the customers as well. And um, for your first question, um, you asked whether we have asked them what is wrong with the pets. That's why 30% of them say they do not accept it. Well, that is because they think that the pet is so thin, they, they want it thicker, and they think that, oh, there's no wings, so they want it wings. And they think our product, since it is just our minimum viable product, we do it by our hands, so it's not like machinely made. So they, they, they human instinctively compare this man manual stuff to uh, their disposable pads. So you, you will get it tested or you have had it tested? It, you were saying yes, because it's a health product, you definitely will get it tested. So have you had that happen or? We have not had that happen yet because we are now in the process of building the prototype. Yes, and studying about the customer's need. But we will. <laughs> but 
but um, let me ask, uh, add something. Since we are a technical student, so we know how to test them manually. And we have a lab. As I mentioned before, that the IU lab will welcome us to test their, our products. So the quality can be acceptable by doing some parameter experimental tests. Thank you. You are, you are fairly confident that it would pass then because you've got their own technical expertise is what you're saying. Okay. Thank you, Kishoka. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for the presentation. <laughs> Moving on to the next team for today, please welcome uh, students from Liger Leadership Academy to pitch their presentation on herbatory. Thank you. Judges, are you ready? Great. Team, are you ready? You may start your presentation. Thank you. Good morning, judges and ladies and gentlemen. Our business is called Heritory, where we deliver historical content in a series of comic books to the student. Now let us walk you through our journey. The goal of our business is to encourage young Cambodians to understand more about their own history in a way that is effortless. And as concerned young student, we understand that, Cambodia, uh, it, that Khmer history, specifically, is one of the harder subjects to learn. And a key feature of that, we think, is its heavy text and rigorous reading required of students in order to understand. Therefore, we went out to test these assumptions by serving high school students from the age of 14 to 18. And here are some questions in our survey. Our first few questions, we asked them about their interest in the history subject. And while they like learning history, they don't like the way that it is being delivered. And, of, and one of the elements that make them dislike learning history is that they have to read a lot of text. Based on the last assumption that has proven to be true, our initial idea was to create an illustrated historical book, where we would be breaking down historical text and pair them with powerful illustrations. With that in mind, here is our initial business canvas. The assumption, the initial assumption for our idea is that students are more likely to be interested in historical picture book rather than history book with heavy text. And therefore, we created our low resolution prototype and this is how it looked like. And as seen on this graph, all of the 159 students that we've surveyed, none of them said no to the question of would you buy our comic book after they have been presented with our low resolution prototype. However, from that graph alone, we do not have enough evidence to conclude anything meaningful for the business. Therefore, we need to do more validation and testing. From the same survey, we asked what type of book do students like to read? And the proportion of students who like to read comic, novel and biography are almost the same. Therefore, the key features of these things should also be included in our product. And based on the data that we received and what it taught us, we then proceed on making our first necessary pivot to our idea. 
Our first pivot, we shifted our focus from creating an illustrated historical book to, to deliver the history content in a series of comic book instead. Here is our business canvas again after that pivot. The next step for our business would be to create a second prototype that have been professionally illustrated and fact-checked by experts in the field. And of course, we face struggle in creating the second prototype. It's hard to find illustrator for our second prototype. So we went out to um, communities of artists across Facebook and individual Facebook accounts. And fortunately enough, our business got to inspire a young and rising illustrator who's willing to illustrate our book for free. Ad additionally, we also reached out to a historian who will be helping improve it, our content. And this is because historical accuracy is very important. And this is our business Canva. We have updated our key partners. And for the written portion of our book, we were able to source our story from the government book, as well as adding creative flair into the story to improve the reader experience. And in this book, we wrote about King Soraya Waterman II. And of course, with the addition of our creative flair, the book will have to be proofread by experts in both Khmer language and Khmer history. And as a way to maintain our grammatical and historical accuracy, we had teacher of literacy and teacher of history check our content. And here are some pages from our second prototype. It can also be seen on the book that we have provided. And in our earlier journey, we found out about Wopato. And Wopato is a team of content creators where they deliver entertaining content such as short comic and short animated video. And because we know that they had already been working around the same field, we then decided to reach out to them as a potential key partner. We discussed line of collaboration with them. And after many conversations that we had, they show really high interest in supporting our business through helping to distribute our book through the distribution channel, as well as by providing us with financial support. And here's our business Canva. We have updated our key partners, our channels, and our revenue stream. With our second prototype done, we move on to create new assumption for, the, uh, for our target customer. Afterward, we start to stand out so way again by showing our second prototype to high school students across Cambodia. And using our second prototype, 61% of the students so way said that they are willing to purchase our book. And based on the result of the data, it turned out that our assumption was true. Students are interested in our book. Then we move on to testing our second customer segment as a teaching tool. And uh, we reach out to this leading school in Phnom Penh to ask whether they're willing to integrate our product into their history curriculum. While their responses were positive, schools didn't need more time to examine our product. Thus, we will come back to the school once we finish our first version. However, through this direct contact, we were able to identify another potential customer for our business, which is school libraries. And so to test uh, this customer segment, we went out to leading school again to test if they're willing to buy our product uh, to put in their library. And uh, two schools responded and they are willing to buy our product to put in their library. With that, we expanded our customer segment to include school libraries. And because we always seek for a way to reach out to young Cambodian, we believe that parents could be our other potential customer. So then we reach out to parents and seek for their interest in buying our book for their children. And we interviewed 22 parents, uh, including par Cambodian parents who live here, as well as Cambodian parents who live overseas. And 86.4% of them said yes, that they're willing to buy our book for their children. And with that in mind, we learned that parents, Cambodian parents, including here and as well as overseas, they are willing to invest in our book. To uh, they are willing to invest in our book for their children to be able to learn about their own history. Moreover, with this data, we will also be able to learn that our book could be translated and provided to Cambodi young Cambodian overseas to learn more about their own history. And he and here is our business Canva. We have. 
So we have updated our customer segment. And here is our final solution compared to the very first idea after we did the validation. As a result, we have changed our idea from creating an illustrated historical book to create a creative series of non-fiction comic books instead. And for our final value proposition, because our book contains my design and using basic language, hence it is very simple and easy for the student to understand the content that we are trying to deliver. Moreover, because our book comes in a form of story, so the student will be able to enjoy the story while also learning about their own history. Additionally, the price of our book is very affordable for, for high school students. Last but not least, through many surveys that we have conducted, we know that illustrated novel is something that our customer highly value. Moving on to the final customer segment. Here in Cambodia, it includes high school students, school library, and domestic parents. As for the idea of uh, our product as a teaching tool or teaching material, we need to do more testing and validation. As uh, for overseas, there will be Khmer parents and teenagers who are interested in our product. And for the revenue stream, we will earn money by selling our comic book for $3.50 per book. And here is our final business canvas. With Heritory, we believe that students will be able to effortlessly learn about their own history. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you, team, for a wonderful presentation just now. May I please invite the judges for the Q&A session? Thank you. Uh, thank you. Nice, uh, nice presentation. A very interesting topic, by the way, um, Cambodian history. But just, just one simple question. If you're going to sell these books for $3.50 a piece, um, what's to stop somebody just photocopying this? And you, have you thought about that aspect? How, how do you protect, as a copyright issue, true, but it's also a practical issue? You can't really stop people just saying, this is great, I'll photocopy 50 of these and give them to my... Have you, have you thought about that issue? Okay, uh, uh, thank you for your question. Um, can you clarify question, the question a bit? Okay, as a business proposition, you're going to make your profit by selling these for $3.50 each, right? Yeah. Okay, so if I buy one for $3.50, then I go to my photocopy machine and copy 50 of them and give them out to my students. Have you thought about that issue? Because if everybody does that, you'll sell 10, you know what I mean? So have, have, you, even, have you even thought about that issue being in Cambodia? Uh, yeah, we have thought about that issue in Cambodia and we have actually uh, reached out to uh, get uh, like bulk price so that we can make it as cheap as possible so that it's cost ineffective to photocopy a 25 page uh, comic book in full color. So it's better to buy our uh, cheaper original product than the photocopied product. Um, to Good add response, on, by the way. Um, to add on to that a little bit more, the, for the prototype, it's only nine pages book and we know the rental price for that, which is um, $3. Uh, like it's really expensive. So if an our for our final book is gonna be a twenty five pages comic book. So if they were to photocopy it, it wouldn't they wouldn't make an, a lot of profit from copying our book as well. That's why we keep our price from three dollar and fifty cents so that it is affordable enough for the student to buy the original piece instead of buying the photocopy version. So I, I have a question just to follow up with Matt's question. Um, so, so the solution is, is the, the question of do you self-publish the book or publish the book if I find a publisher? So I was watching closely on the channels and maybe it went by too fast. I don't know, have you talked to publishers? Because publishers, they, they actually, the benefit of going through a publisher is they're responsible, they're gonna protect the copyright and all that, you know. Uh, so um, did you, did you uh, um, do research to see which one's better, self-publishing or publishing? Um, um, can you uh, break down your question a little bit and clarify it a little bit what you're trying to? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. So, um, <laughs> so uh, um, did you uh, talk to publishers? Uh, so these are these are people that uh, they publish uh, books for art for authors. So an author brings a book, a manuscript, to a publisher. If the publisher agrees to publish the book then it's the publisher who is responsible for making sure there's copyright protection and things like that. 
Um, so th there's advantages, there's pros and cons of self-publishing and publishing. As an author, I'm, I'm quite familiar with, with, with both, both ones, but I'm wondering for you, if you explored that, um, if you did research to see which one's a better option for you. Um, thank you for your question. Um, so we haven't really got a chance to explore um, that much, but we reached out to a few printers to know the price of um, the commercial printing. So um, we reached out to um, different one to see um, the different prices, and also we um, our school have published the book before, so um, we we have a lot of mentor that we can ask for the copyright issue. But thank you so much for recommendation. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Uh, very interesting. I believe heritage is, is, is very important. Um, so I have a very quick question because in your scope you are covering people who are in overseas as well. So did you ever consider in your survey to ask the question whether they would like this digitally? Um, um, in our initial survey, we haven't put that in yet, but we asked them for their feedback on the prototype. And in our next survey, we take that into consideration. Thank you so much. Good morning. Okay. Thank you very much for the good presentation. Actually, as a person uh, who has been here in Cambodia and uh, loved Angkor Wat and these places, actually, I'm, I'm, I've been, I will be waiting for the international version of the, these <laughs> books. Uh, preferably in English, or if it's in Japanese, it would be great. <laughs> so anyway, the, these books, in my mind, you are talking about uh, some illustrations and the designs. And then I, what I hear, I see, is like a volunteer by these persons. But I feel it's very important to keep these people uh, motivated or interested to help or participate into this model. So have you thought about any like a revenue sharing or any, any reward for these people who are making a good contribution for the de good designs or illustration and these things? Um, thank you for your question. Uh, if I get the question right, um, it's about whether should we share our, uh, we, we should hire an uh, illustrator who is like uh, from Cambodia. Um, yep, that would be uh, the next step for our business and uh, we hope to be able to impact uh, you, a young illustrator, on their own journey as well. Yeah. Thank you for your question. Thank you for your presentation. I think your business model tackles a very noble challenge. My question might be a little bit difficult, but I wanted to see if you had considered um, the type of history that you're describing, because there is not one single truth <laughs> for histories, and there's a lot of debate around um, wars <laughs> and other very key topics. So I'm wondering if you discussed with your, through your research what is the history that you should present. Um, thank you so much for your question. So currently, um, the main number one resource that we get to um, write our story is from the government school textbook. And we chose to do that because we want our book to be a supplement for the government school student to be able to learn their own history while uh, through a process that is effortless and they would be able to enjoy that. So we chose the, uh, the government school textbook because we want to reach more government, uh, government school students as well as uh, students who are learning through national curriculum because we believe that through that we be able to impact more young Cambodian and meet the goal that we are trying to pursue. Yeah. Since our judges has run out of questions, we'll end the Q&A sessions now. Thank you so much, Thank team, you for the so wonderful much. time. Now, ladies and gentlemen, moving on to the next team for today. Please welcome Reverse Vending Machine from Kemet Business School, NUM, <laughs> National University of Management, AUPP, and IFL. Thank you.
like to say to Mitsu. Uh, today, we are here because we are sick of the environment problem and we want to change the mindset of the Cambodian people. But before going straight into the topic, I would like to, I, I would like to uh, let's read the main reason why we are initiating this project. So, first of all, I want all of you to walk outside this building and then sell your bottle to four different scrap buyers or four different HI. They will give you four different price. Prove me wrong. So basically, uh, this instability of market price lead to people cannot find the market for selling the recyclable material and lead to pollution. And you know what? The pollution lead to harming people's health. And some of us might say, does this really matter in our current society? Well, it costs two main things. It costs detrimental impact on the environment, and then you, your family, and your community you love. That's, that's why two of my lovely looking teammates saying to me, we should do something about this. And we also determined saying, welcome to SMK reverse vending machine. I think, uh, I think uh, the slogan has basically explained you everything, so you give me trash and I give you cash in return. Spoiler alert, our mission is trying to eliminate the middleman so that all of the recyclable material, including uh, borrow and can price, increase so that all of the people are encouraged to collect the bottle and can put in our machine and we will send directly to the main buyer. Uh, the comparison between the actual dimension, and this is a prototype. This is a sample machine. We have an advertisement, so if you're planning to have an advertisement on the machine, negotiate with me. And uh, so how does a machine work? Basically, uh, you, you have to remove the cap, deposit the bottle and can in our machine. Our machine will basically uh, showing how much the plastic has it, and then also the amount of cash you receive. And then we, uh, we use air compressor, a pneumatic cylinder, to crash so that we can have more amount of recycled material in our machine. And uh, people have two choices, whether it's for e-wallet or phone number, input your phone number if, uh, uh, if you want to have received the money, and, and uh, the money will be automatically sent to your bank account application for the explanation will be later on. And uh, uh, some people say to me, especially my friend, they're saying, we are a developing country, we don't have the technology to be able to sing. I talked with three different people. I talked with Ms. Malika, a professional AI machine learning engineer who's currently living in Estonia. I talked with Dr. Ricardo, a vice of industry post telecommunication. I talked with a mechanic engineer from Japan, Mr. Murakat. They, they all have the same impression. They say, although this project is about trash, it is not a trash project. It is technically possible to invent without blindly buying from the country, and it is a crucial change to the mindset of the Cambodian people to differentiate between an actual trash and recyclable material. Uh, my dad says, we are, this is not United States, this is not Europe, this is Cambodian, and no one pay attention to recyclable material. But I prove him wrong. I conducted a survey and 80% say yes, uh, for selling recyclable material, only small proportions say no. So it's a good thing we have a lot of potential customers, but does this really determine the outcome of our project? Let's find out. Uh, so how, as you can see here, we have created our first uh, canvas. We have, create, we have put many things in there and we also identified them in its own respective sectors as well. However, as we proceed through our first canvas, we have met some problems. So the first problem that we've met was that we got rejected from many potential buyers. Uh, we actually contacted them through phones and emails. However, the answer was still that we got rejected. And the second problem was that we need to change our reward system. So initially, we were planning that uh, three options, so cash, coupons, and uh, transfer agents. For cash, we were worried about the securities. And for the coupon, after getting many feedback, the user said they would not use it anyways. So it's kind of like a waste. And for transfer agents, the cost of operation for this as a startup, it would be too high for us. So the third problem was that we need to eliminate, re uh, recycle into new products part of, out of our revenue stream. The question is why? It's because that the process is quite complex for us to handle at the moment. However, once our uh, business is mature enough, we will proceed through this. The fourth problem was that we need to cut down some customer segments. Those two segments were KTVs and restaurants. We've actually met them and, and introduced them about our machines, and they said that the, uh, it would be too time consuming for them to use it, so they would just stick with the tr traditional method instead. So we modify into our second canvas. As you can see here, we have added Borai into our keys partner and also customer segment. 
And we also added our own application into our reward system. So our own applications right here is basically like basically like an e-wallet application. It's going to be a very straightforward process, very users friendly. The users basically just um, store their points in the app and convert them into the reward at any time they want. However, our main problem is still trying to find our actual buyers. At this point, we have contacted a lot of them and some of them said uh, they were okay with us and agree with us, with working with us. However, the price that we're giving to us was quite low. So what did we do? We asked for help. We actually contacted and met with Professor, professor Ying Soya, who is an AUPP professor and works at World Bank Advisors, and also Mr. Sam Pala, who is a co-founder of Composite Organizations. Both of them support our projects, and they also explain, about, uh, in, explain us in detail about the waste management and recycling process in our country as well. However, the, com the process is quite complex and both of them support our, mach our machine. So later on, we also conducted a survey online to ask would the user really use the machines. With a sample size of 134, 90% said yes, and only 3% said they would just stick with the traditional method. We've also conducted many face-to-face -face interviews as well, as you can see here, and the feedback was that all of them love it, all of them would use the machines. However, a small percentage, around 8% of them, said the trends of using this machine would die quite out soon, as many other trends that has happened in Cambodia. So as we move on to our third canvas, the first activity that we did was that we tried to validate the information with Bo Rai. So we wanted to know whether we can place our machine at their location or not, so we decided to reach out to them. But after multiple reach out, the final answer was that they wasn't interested in our product. So we move on, we cross them out for now and move on to our second point, which is creating our own application. So initially, we think that having our own application is a really positive thing because we have a lot of control over the rewarding system. But as we take cost factor of creation and maintenance and we take security factor into consideration, we think that it's not the right time for us to create this application yet. And that is why we decided to find the alternative solution and reached out to Bakong instead. So what is Bakong? Bakong is an e-wallet application created by the Central Bank of Cambodia, and they have partnership with over 32 financial institutions here. So we reached out to them through first through email, phone number, and then we went directly to the Central Bank. And we will be having a meeting with them soon to discuss further on that matter. So some of the reason why we decided to reach out to Bakong is that Bakong and us has a common goal of promoting Khmer Reels. And aside from that, they also use phone number for conducting transactions, which is one of the features that we want the most in order to simplify the way that people use our machine. And then we also, they also have the security that we are concerned about, and they have the goal of achieving financial inclusion. And we believe that we can contribute to this goal. And as we've been working on Bakong, we've also been going around collecting price data of the bottles and can per kilogram. So we was able to get the price of this material at different levels of the supply chain. And we can see that on the first column, people usually get 200 reels when they sell their um, scrap to the first buyer and around 5,000 reel for the aluminum can. And we also found some buyers, actual buyers for our product, so we include them in our third canvas, in our key partners. And as we move on to our fourth canvas, we spray our attention a little bit into finding a vocational school that can help us with building the machine. And one of the main reasons why we chose vocational school is because they, um, they can help create the machine at a low cost. So luckily enough, when we went there, we met Professor Mon Nang, and he agreed to help us with building the machine. And for uh, the machine outside, they usually cost around $2,000 or $3,000. But after discussing with him, our machine can cost less than $1,000. And after that, we also got another good information from Bing, in which Bing actually has a feature that allows people to conduct transactions by using their phone number. So we also reached out to them. So this is our final canvas for now. And um, for our cost per unit, we have predicted that in the third column, if we can collect around 2,000 uh, 2, bottles and can per day, the cost per unit could be less than one cent. And this is not where we stop. We will continue to expand our 
plan. So we want to export the material also in order to get a better price, and we also want to expand our revenue stream and create a better machine. So thank you. Thank you, team. That was a wonderful presentation. Thank you. Super both. interested. I have a bottle right here. <laughs> now, may I please invite the judges for the Q and A session? Thank you. Yep. Thank you very much for your great presentation. Actually, it reminds me about the project that I used to work with my team and the Asian Leadership Program as well. Oh. We work on similar project. Oh, interesting. Yep. And actually, I think that related to throwing the trust to gain some uh, refund, it is linked to customer behavior change. So with your project, are you working on any in initiative in order to make people change their behavior? Oh, yes, definitely. That is actually one of the main reasons why we created this project. We want to help people change their mindset in the recycling. So um, usually, uh, if we know this decomposing society, they now, society nowadays, instead of like collecting this material, they tend to like uh, dump this materials into the bin, but all other ways. And we think that this is such a big problem. Like even though we, uh, according to the information from the uh, Ministry of Environment, it shows that 80% of the waste has been dumped at the land uh, landfill, and it not segregated. And nowadays, the statistics also, so, also show that around 3,000 metric tons has been dumped into the landfill every day. And since the lifestyle of Cambodian people is increasing, the amount of waste it will also increase. So if we don't take action in changing this mindset, it will be an even bigger problem in the future. So that is why one of the main reasons we created this project, to help them change early on. And if you mind, I would also want to add uh, one of our main sector that we want, market segment that we want to focus on is students and there is a specific reason why we choose students, which is we want to help them change their mindset early on because we know that for students, the amount of incentive that they get would be more important to them and at the same time, if they develop this behavior early, sorry, early on in their early stage of life, it will like, stick to them later on. Thank you. Uh, th thank you for your interesting uh, presentations. Um, it's a kind of uh, a good initiative for uh, recycling, actually. And uh, the first question from me is, how, how big is your machine? Pardon? Oh, how big is the machine? Sorry. So okay. this is uh, this is how we plan to make the machine. So it's gonna be meters. gonna be around two meters, uh, two meters wide length, and then it's like the depth of the machine could be zero point eight meters. Okay. And for the height, it could be possibly one point eight meters. How how many bottles or can uh, is needed for a reward? Sorry. One per, per time. For example, I, uh, yeah, I put a ten bottles. Is it enough? Um, actually, to get reward. Um, thank you for the question. So with the reward, we actually reward people with uh, they get the reward each time they deposit, and that mm. is why. Wait, a little bit. So um, if you mind, sorry. Um, I think we have a technical problem, sorry. Wait. Operation cost per unit, okay. So with the rewarding system, whenever people deposit the bottles, they can get like 10 reels. And then for the cans, they get 50 reels. And I, this is the amount that we can provide right now because it's been quite challenging for us to find the buyers. But we will be trying to find more buyers that can provide us a better price so that we can give them a better incentive. So this four per unit. Oh, per unit, okay. Yes. Okay. And, and okay. 
the, 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 the price of the machine is quite high, actually, it's, even though it's less than a thousand, but yeah, the break even, how, how many years uh, it would take your team you to have a break even, uh, just break for the even. machine, actually? Uh, thank you for your question, uh, Mr. Judge. I, I really appreciate it. I could not combine everything on the slide because it's going to look messy. So the question is why, why does the machine cost like really, really low? And uh, so I, I would like to tell you that every machine has a hardware and software. So the 600 is hardware. The hardware, all of the components, there's a LCD, there's a actuator, the pneumatic cylinder, there's a uh, everything that is related to the hardware is all of the $600. So where is the software price? So the software price, basically, I made a collaboration with my IT, uh, with my IT department in my uh, university, AUPP, and uh, we were planning to, because every student has the final year project, and I, I intended to use all of this opportunity to encourage all of them working together, building the software together, um, and also we have a professional guidance. Uh, we also have a teacher who is a professional uh, blockchain developer and a, a, a professional software developer. I also have a mechanic engineer, Mr. Morakat. I also have a, a guidance from a, a un professor from NTTI who is an electrical engineer. So all of the, all of the skills that are required for building machine, we can make a collaboration uh, for a really, long, a really, really short time. So the second answer for your question is that how, how, how what duration for building a machine? The duration for building a machine, if we put all of our effort, if we put on all the commitment, I can guarantee that it's only uh, less than six months. Um, can I answer your question a little bit with the break-even? And uh, for the break-even, we've also predicted, um, may I get, we also predicted that it could take less than two years uh, okay, thank you for for the break even. So since our the collection, the the amount of, man, of money that we can make is related to the relationship between the quantity of bottles and can that we can collect. So we create this equation that study the relationship of them, and we have predicted that um, if we can collect around five thousand. 50,000 cans and 100,000 bottles, we can take less than two years to break even. Yes. I want to ask a question. Can you go back to the slide you had before about how much the return is per bottle and per can? Uh, power consumption. Yeah. 10 real per bottle, 40 real per can. That one stopped. 50 real per can. I just want to know, so your machine, you will pay me 10 real for every bottle I put in your machine, right? Is that what you're saying? Yes. So I would have to put in 400 bottles to get $1, is that true? Okay. How long would it take me to put 100, 400 bottles in your machine? Do I have to put them in one at a time? Oh, nice question. So definitely for now, that's, on the, that's what we plan. And but, but okay, no, no, but have you thought about that? Do you know how long it would take? So if I was to put 400, if, if that's going to take me an hour, I mean, how many bottles could you possibly take in a day? And if it's that, maybe you make $8 a day or something. You know what I mean? So, so yeah, how long does it, have you actually thought through how long it would take somebody to insert enough bottles and cans? Because you can't just pour in 400 right at the top. You've got to put them in one by one. How long would that take? So... We thought about that, that we, but we didn't really do the exact calculation. However, per like whenever people use the machine, it could take them like for the deposit, it could take them like probably two seconds per time. So um, that is what we can provide for now. But then, this is not uh, only what we plan for now. In the long term, we also plan to create a machine that can deposit multiple bottles at one. Like you just. Um, have a sack of bottles and can it, and then you just pour it in. Yes, so we hope to have that future. Um, hi, thank you very much for the presentation. I have a very simple question. Um, 
because you know they have companies who were obliged to do recycling and recycling is done on some level did you talk to these companies as to what uh, problems they were facing as to why they have not come with any of these uh, innovative solutions or just and or how differently have you done after you got their feedback if you've talked to them like companies like coca-cola and stuff because they have a lot of loads and loads of experience right and in other countries they are imposed to make sure that it's recycled so have you talked to them about this concept? Uh, you guys can answer that last question. Okay, okay. So we take that into consideration and we are having, like, we will be having a meeting with them anytime soon. So, yeah. S specifically Coca-Cola will indeed have it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you, team, for the awesome presentation. Moving on to the next team for today, please welcome another team from Liger Leadership Academy, Legacy. Thank you. What is your legacy? What stories do you want to tell and how do you preserve your most precious memories? In families, we tell stories through words of mouth and preserve our memories in photo albums. These meaningful stories are the identity of our family and country, yet we have no way to preserve them directly from our family members to keep for many future generations. This is where a legacy comes in, as a platform that empowers everyone to record and archive their stories meaningfully through videos. The legacy platform assists customers through every stage of their documenting process, as well as providing a family tree where they can preserve their stories in. We also offer add-on services where customers will be connected to professionals who will directly help them to create their life story videos. But first, let's take a look on how we landed on this final idea. Initially, we wanted our company to be a media production company that will professionally document customer story with the help of our key partners such as videographers, journalists, and editors. To test out this idea and understand more about the videography market, we have reached out to Mr. Kim Han Putia and Su Kim Seng, who worked at the Kudu Film Studio in Phnom Penh. They both love our idea and are willing to partner with us as our videographers. However, a challenge we learned is that the average daily wage of a Cambodia videographer is between $100 to $200, which we believe is more than what our customer can pay for. In addition, the videographer had to live near or travel with the customer in order to shoot on site. This will also limit our market. That's when we came up with our first major pivot point. We changed our company from a media production company to a preserving and assisting platform with new key activities and value propositions. We are now focused on platform development and designing assisting guide in both story structuring and the technical aspect of it. This will empower the customer to record their story easily and store it in our family tree. This will also cut down the professional cost as customer will now be able to create the video by themselves and our new cost will be used for web development, cloud storage, along with marketing. And we also have validated the pr price of cloud storage and web development with a professional software engineer at the IXL Learning in California, Mr. Max Eagle. Now, with these new changes, we can also scale our idea into an international audience. 
our new revenue models has also been changed to a platform subscription payment. However, customers can do still hire professionals as add-on services to help them with the documenting process. So to test our new ideas with our customers, we sent out surveys to members of many genealogy Facebook groups with the promise to give free service trial to those who completed it. However, the challenge was that we did not get a lot of response. So we pivoted to instead find customers to interview so that we can even better validate our customers' interest. And from this, we can validate it that our customer can include both national and international audience around the world, as we did the interview with both people from Cambodia and from the United States. And within these interviews, they revealed that storing memories on photo albums or digital spaces does not help them to feel connected to the past, since these photos cannot tell the deep personal stories behind them. And in addition, digital spaces can be very messy and it's not specific enough to preserve their memories in a meaningful way. And many of the customers that we talk to really love our idea. Some of them even allow us to do our service trial with them in which we help them to structure their story and shoot their videos, allowing us to further validate the operation of our service. And we also adopted our customer feedback to add professional story structuring, interviewing, and editing as necessary as part of the add-on because many of our customers do not have the time and skills to work on these aspects. Now that we have validated with our customers, it's time to talk to our key partners who are journalists, videographers, and editors. We have met with several film directors from the Bupana Documentary Filmmaking and Multimedia Training Program, and they shared with us the process to best capture life story videos, which we will use to design our assisting guides to help customers through their documenting stages on our platform. We also talked to Mr. Steve Bell, an experienced journalist from New York, and he validated our market, saying that this, this service is unique, and he agreed to be Legacy's add-on service partner of story structure and interviewing. Now we have him on board as our key partner, and a part of our add-on service is covered. Next, from the Kudu Film Studio, we have Mr. Kim Han Puthi as our partner of videography and Mr. Sun Kim Seng as our partner of editing. Now they're also part of our key partner and all of our add-on service is covered. We also pitched our business idea to Ms. Julie Snyder, an award-winning former vice president of the Blue Cross Blue Shield Corporate in New York, and she loved it. As a marketing expert, she validated our business model and suggested that in order for us to make our service more widely affordable, we can adapt our prices according to different countries' economy, such as the average household income. And we agreed to put this on our revenue stream also because through our interviews, we learned that the international and Cambodian market are different, and therefore we need different prices to accommodate that. We have also created a prototype of our website to test it out and gain feedback from the customer. From those interviews, we changed our assumption from having customers who are 18 years old to those who are in their 30 to 60 and above, as they tend to care more about preserving their family story, especially about their elderly parents, grandparents, as well as their newborn kids. We also believe that the middle to upper class family will be able to better afford our services. For the revenue stream, we found out that customers are willing to pay a yearly subscription of $999 a year for the Cambodian market and $39.99 a year for the US market. And the customer are also willing to and wanted to pay for the additional add-on service to help them with the documenting process. So now that we have our business model validated, we further research on the market of our service and we found out that the genealogy market is projected to value over 8.5 billion US dollars and register a compound annual growth rate of 11% from 2019 to 2029. So this really shows the potentials of our service to expand in the future. And as, part, and as part of the competitor analysis, we also found out that there is no existing 
companies that is similar to legacy in Cambodia. However, these are some international services around the world. A lot of these services focus on the family tree feature, tracking the information of each family members. But a lot of these services do not focus on combining genealogy and storytelling like legacy does. So at first, we thought of these company as our competitors. But later on, we reframed them to be our key partners instead because we think that it would give us mutual benefit, especially when these companies do not have the unique value proposition that Legacy has. So we started contacting all of these genealogy services around the world, including Ancestry.com and other services, and we got to meet with Miss Taylor Wellman from Adifact, which is a company that creates personal podcasts for customers. And as the head of partnership, she really think that customer would love our idea. And she strongly believe in the potential of our family tree features. So this is really allowing us to validate our business idea with one of the top companies who are working in the same field as us. And Ms. Taylor is now currently working with Artifact CEOs on our potential collaboration. And at the moment, we are also in the process of exploring other possible partnerships with other companies, including MyHeritage and Ancestry.com. And this is the final version of our business model canvas. And finally, with, with Legacy, Legacy Story, Story Lives On. on. Thank you for the presentation. Now I would like to invite the judges for the Q&A session. Thank you. Uh, yes, very good presentation. Well done to the team. Uh, I just would like to check with you about the number of the, I mean, potential customer that you conduct the survey, whether they like that project and willing to support it or not. How many percentage that uh, would accept uh, for the customer in country? Thank you for that question. So, um, what as as we mentioned that when first we send try to send out surveys to different genealogy Facebook groups to uh, for their feedback and then we pivoted back to interviews because it allows us to have deeper understanding of their interest and uh, actually about their interest actually all of them really like our idea and they even uh, they some they just give us uh, additional feedback on how we can improve on our service. For example, uh, these some of them, they wanted other add-on service. So first, we only have videography to help them shoot their video. But after these interviews, they suggested to put more add-on services, such as story structuring and helping them to interview. So all of them like the core idea, but they just give us other additional feedback to further improve our service. Um, and to add on, um, within the people that we interviewed, some of them even allow us to do our service trial with them in which we help them with the process of um, structuring their story and shooting their videos. And we also give and get a lot of positive feedbacks within the products that we give them. So this is an actual service trial where they run, we run the service for them and they love the final product. Your pricing, right? So subscription, and I think for Cambodia, was $9.99 a year. So what is, what is the, what do you get for the $9.99 a year? What, what, what is the base, yeah. So this, for that, is for the basic package where they have ac access to the assisting tutorial videos and story structuring as well as family tree. So this is what the uh, structuring your story looks like. They can come in onto our platform, answer a series of questions, and we will give them an outline of what to speak on their story. We assist them uh, through that as well as they can ha uh, get questions to best answer their stories. and. 
Uh, these are short tutorial videos to how to best capture the story, such as videography, how to shoot in the best angle, and as well as our family tree. If part of that $9.99 includes them going on your site, asking questions and getting guidance, is that, is that an actual person on the other end doing that? Or is that just videos of how to do it? Or, or they have questions, you're actually going to have a human being who's responding back saying, do this, do that. And I could ring you every day and ask you that for the next... So how, how much human staff does it take, do you anticipate, would be required to provide this service? So for the basic package, it will be automated. The outline, the document, and the videos will be uh, will create it ahead. But when the customer go on to our website, they click the mood, the tone of the story, and those specific tutorial that best fit the type of story they want will be sent to them. So it will be done automated on the website, and uh, we don't uh, have human to human interaction. The, Part of that is the, if you, they want somebody to speak to them, or they need to uh, purchase the additional add-on services. Hi, uh, thank you for the presentation. It's a, a very interesting concept. Um, just coming back to the cost, because you talked about in Cambodia, it's $9.99, and in US, it's $39.99. I was a bit confused on that part, because this is going to be accessible worldwide. Do you want to make it international? So have you given it a yeah. thought about um, what kind of average cost you would uh, pay? Because uh, irrespective of where I am, I could be questioning on your co costs for different countries having a, a different rate? That's my first question. Yes, the, so first. Sorry, sorry, the second question I have is basically because it's, as it says, legacy. So typically, um, if so, as a consumer, if I ask you, how long will you keep this in your cloud base? And uh, basically, what is the data protection associated with it? Uh, how would you answer that? Yes, so first to answer your first question, we'll give uh, further information about uh, the fact that we will start this service in the U.S. Because we, as due to our market research, we think that um, the U.S., especially North America, especially the U.S., held the largest share of genealogy market in 2020, 35% of the market, so we'll be starting this service in um, the U.S., and we'll talk about the pricing. And we put different prices for different countries, as this is suggested by Ms. Julie Snyder, the former Vice President of Blue Cross Blue Shield, and she suggested this because she believes that in different countries, with different e economies, the price should be different because of the, their average household income and therefore their, their ability to afford our service. So we do this to make as many people can afford our service as possible according to their own economic situations. And your second question about how long will this be preserved on our website? So for the basic package, when they pay that $9.99 a month, uh, a year in Cambodia, we will preserve it for a year, as well as the basic package. Also for the US, it's also a year. However, if they want to continue to preserve it, they need to continue to pay subscription to our service in order to keep that. And that is because our cost structure is also a cloud storage subscription, which we, we need to continually renew it. Thank you. On, on the issue of, okay, so with all businesses, one of the hardest parts is to get it off the ground and get it underway. Once it's underway, it takes on life its own, you've got revenue streams coming in, you can scale up, etc. cetera. How, how many sign-ups do you need in the beginning to make this work? So if you're charging somebody $9.99 a year, I mean, what, what are your, I'm trying to get at what are your costs? How many people are involved, you know, all this, that, and the other. So how many customers do you think you need to make this really happen? and then on your way. So 
to start up this business will be implemented to in international markets first as there's a higher demands of this type of service in an international market to hit the breaking point of our uh, business we'll need uh, around 2000 package to be specific 1750 package to uh, make money in our first year and 2000 package which means 2000 customer might seem a lot but an international audience is huge a lot of people speak english and so uh, this will be uh, very achievable within the first year. To market yourself, how is everybody going to find out about this? Have you, what, what's your budget for initial marketing or whatever? We did uh, some research on what are the greatest marketing strategy for a startup like us in the international. And uh, of course, we live in a digital world, so uh, digital marketing is the first step. And we did research and found out that customers from the ages of 30 to 65 plus mostly use uh, YouTube and Facebook, and therefore we will start our marketing there. And we have our key partners, who have, who, uh, such as journalists, Steve Bell, a 20 year plus journalist in New York, and other videographers and editors who already have their customers, so uh, they are well known and therefore can attract many customers. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation and uh, two questions two questions first I'm very curious to know which ideas coming into your head first you are talking about the legacy like a family story as a one of the I mean the core of the business or another one such as media production business you talk about in the, in the presentation so which idea was coming into your head first did you start thinking about the media production business first and then coming down to the idea like a development of the family story? Or you are thinking about the family story first and then thinking about uh, some businesses with media production function? So first we actually think of the production of helping people to create their videos, to shoot professionally, but then because it will uh, it requires a lot of professional cost as videographers need to go on site to shoot for the customers and uh, it also needs to be done locally so we instead pivoted to the platform that empowers customers to create their own videos and therefore comes later the family tree and all of the platform. Does that answer the question? In that sense, the media production for companies idea coming first. Yes. Yes. Second question, Mayor? Finished? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to everyone respecting our time schedule. Thank you to the team for an outstanding presentation just now. Moving on to our next team for today, please welcome the team from CAT and NUM International College students. Gayla, thank you.
May I know how many of you here are playing sport? Can you raise your hand? That's quite a lot. Thank you. So I myself, a football player, there are many factors that motivate me to do sport actually. It could be my team that did not show up, or I got reject from the opponent team, or even I got concerned at the last minute from the sport venue. So I get out of the building, I take my personal problem as an assumption, and I test it out with the people. I go out and talk to more than 200 people, and here's what I found in common. More than, 800, more than 80 people, they found that the sport venue information is uh, very hard to be uh, reach them in terms of pricing, facility that they provide, or the uh, time available. And more than 70% of them said that uh, they have a teammate problem because not many all of their friends have uh, the same sport type interested. And then uh, more than 60 people have uh, opponent team problem. Specifically speaking, it's a football player because football requires two teams to be played. So I introduced you to a solution. Uh, it's called Kele, a mobile app that uh, allows users to search for sport venue, teammate, opponent, close to their current location, first year people, and based on the sport type. Our mission is to, to increase people engagement through doing uh, sport group activity. We, we start our target by uh, doing three most played sports in Phnom Penh, which is football, uh, basketball, and badminton, aged between 15 to uh, 35, and they are familiar with the digital payment. What is so special about Gale? We, we just a few click, it's very convenient. They can book it with uh, reliable information, uh, and then not to mention that they can uh, connect to many sport community, especially uh, meet the people who have the same interest in sport. So after introducing this concept, we have uh, more than 120 people sign up for beta testing, and 16 teams as well. And then we could update our uh, business model canvas, the sport player that we target it, uh, the value that we provide to them, and then we're trying to test our revenue stream. The first one, it is uh, we saw that we could charge them three dollars per month just to uh, access to our value proposition. And then we follow up with the beta, uh, beta register. Sadly, I would like to tell you that not really, they are not really going to pay. One hundred, more than one hundred of them are not going to pay for this. So we decided to just uh, provide this app for free for them. And we have dropped the uh, three dollar subscription, and then we try to look on another corner. Uh, since we're working as a middleman, we target the uh, sport venue owner who operate in Phnom Penh, uh, the football, basketball, and badminton, and plan to digitalize their business. So before we get out to talk with them, we made assumption that uh, the complicated process of their booking lead them to decrease their profit. We go and talk to more than 20 sport venue in Phnom Penh, and here is what we found out. First one is uh, with the booking record. Um, most of them still using the paper-based recording, uh, which is very hard to, to keep because it is very challenging and easily to go on. And they have had time every time at the end of the month, they're trying to include their bookkeeping and financial report. Secondly, the invent, uh, inventory management. Last but not least, the arrangement uh, arrange opponent team for their client, since uh, their client would likely to sell if they cannot arrange the opponent team for them, specifically in football. So we saw that we could uh, come up with an assumption, come up with a system and solve all these problems. Uh, so we have a wireframe and get out of the building, testing with uh, two of the experts on the system management who have been doing their whole life on this field, uh, Mr. Sophia Mukul, the CEO of Coding Gap, and uh, Mr. Uh, CEO of Blue, the Mr. Manuel Fache, and they love the idea, they, they like the initiate, and they walk through to design this uh, whole system. So we have our system with a true, three fully as future, and we test and follow up with the spot venue again, we fail. 17 out of 20 of them said that they are not really using this one, and here's the reason why. The user is not friendly enough, and uh, we, the key finding is that they are not sitting still in one place all the time during their operation day, they mobile a lot. So it's just a mobile version app for them instead, as an additional. So we get the building again, talk with the mobile app specialist, Mr. Tin Kozan, uh, the co-founder of Cobin Studio, and we have we finalize our frame board app, and leverage on our user interface as well. We follow up again with the initial devices. 10 out of 10 love it. They're ready to use it. So the value that we're going to deliver for them is that uh, they, we increase their, uh, their sales and we're increasing their brand visibility on digitally, and we provide them with a flexible management system across many devices. Uh, not, uh, we also uh, during reduce their marketing cost because in our early operation, we're burning a lot of cash covering the uh, promotion and discount for them. So we have that our canvas again. 
we have the spot venue on customer segment as well as uh, the partner, and then the volume that we develop to them, and then the partner that going to develop the product for us. So we go looking for another assumption on the revenue stream. So we're making another assumption by charging them 20% of commission fee, but it turned out after validating for more than 20 spot venue in Phnom Penh, they are not willing to pay. So we pay with our revenue model from charging them 20% commission to providing them with these three packages. For the first one, we acquire user spot venue to use our system and as well as onboarding with us by providing this free trail. Second package is for the target user that really, really want to increase their sales by charging them 5 to 10 commission fee based on their spot type and spot of nature. And for the premium package, it's $6.99 uh, for the target user that are in the uh, uh, medium of operation and their scope of work is looking for like management system to uh, utilize their inventory management and moreover like uh, financial management. So we peel with our revenue stream from charging them 20% commission to these three main packages. So as we see our business is fully a potential, we decided to test it another revenue stream. And we have approached these three main companies, including the Catalan Cambodia, Coca-Cola Cambodia, and Manulife Cambodia. They expressed their interest to be part of our platform by putting their ad on our platform as long as we got the user base enough. So we have another revenue stream that have been validated, which is in app advertising. So for our key activity, we will mainly focusing on marketing and customer acquisition, onboarding spot venue, providing promotion to acquire new users, as well as customer support. May making assumption again by putting stand banner as our channel to reach the target potential audience, and as well as social media and word of mouth to turn all the sport lover in our community to be an influencer, to influence other to use our platform. And last but not least is SEO. After meeting with Mr. Panyarat, CEO of TW Agency, who is specialized in SEO specialist, and he said that the top search volume in Cambodian was not sport. So we decided to drop the SEO and kickstart this project by this three main channel. So we have our key activity and as well as our channel. We get out of the building again to test it with several entrepreneurs who have experience in marketing agency for more than 10 years and come up with this main customer relationship strategy. First is referral promo code to retain the user, start booking again and again. Second, reward point to retain the user and booking via our platform more conveniently and as well as review and rating for user to review and feedback on the spot venue. So for our key resources, we are really needed capital, human resources, and product including app and website. So we have our customer relationship and key resources. For our cost structure, we will heavily spending on product development, customer acquisition, and maintenance fee, and as well as car working space. To minimize our cost, we decided to reach Mr. B. Chantra at CADT Innovation Center, and he said that he will provide a free co-working space for us in our operation. So we no need to spend on co-working space in the in development our application. Kayla have been launching their early beta testing in this year and we have the received this many attraction. First, more than 100 of users download our application, 17 booking, more than 1,000 of followers on our social media. We currently have six partners that have been on board with us and even send the contract and our customers are able to search and book via our platform. This is our roadmap of our sports super app in Cambodia in the next three years. First, in the first semester, we plan on pilot launching and also in second semester introducing the feature in the, uh, finding teammate and opponent, official launching in the third year and as well as four year expanding to other provinces and including another feature sport e-commerce as well as the market size is very big and as well as the fifth semester as the sea game is Happened in 2023, we want to uh, make the awareness and start a booking ticket via online and available in Thai and Cambodia in the sixth semester. We are more excited to be featured on many social platforms including My Time, Sabai News, and Tmai Tmai, and many, many more. This is our team with the combination of experience working in marketing agency for more than three years, tech agency for more than two years, and our CFO got selected to internship at SmartAzit. 
Azeta Group and Malaysia, we believe we could execute even further. Honorable judges, this fund is really important for us to execute Kaila even further. What are you waiting for? Start download Kaila and unlock your barrier towards sport. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your presentation. Um, I love sport, so I think it's a great uh, challenge you're tackling. However, um, you are now the fifth team that has presented a business model of this type. So my two questions are, number one, why do you think the other four teams failed in trying to build exactly this business model? And my second question is from the sports facility uh, side. One of the biggest problems is utilization. So we all want to book the football pitch at the same time. How do you solve for both of those? But by the way, the, the great news is that your presentation is the best from the other apps that are presented. So that's good. So, as you're saying, we are not the first one to execute this project in Cambodia. And I'd like to announce that this is the computer analysis that we ha I have did. Many factors that we're comparing to them. So, I'm going to compare myself first with the uh, book Spot. They are only a business directory. They provide the information, but not directly booking. And they have been inactive since 2018. As well as the Go Circle, who have been actively for a short while, and then gone. And they have been active in 2018 as well. So it's only left to us with the traditional booking. Uh, Spanish speaking is our phone call. So these are the factors that we believe we are here to stay and change the customer behavior booking through the spot uh, venue. Uh, to add on, uh, the theory on top of this is that uh, with the, according to the Mekong strategy partner, we have seen that uh, the number of uh, mobile phones have been increasing as well as the digital payment for the last Two year, not to mention that with this, within this COVID-19 pandemic, people are adapting to the digital payment. So easily, this is not going to be a blue ocean market to them anymore. Especially for the our target is very young, and they are familiar with the digital already. And we also contacted personally to Go Soccer, and we have learned that why they decided to stop their business as well as they have been run their operation successfully. So uh, it really related to their personally stuff that uh, they have to study abroad and to spoil it up. And moreover, he said that in uh, the early of 2017, the familiarity with the sport app or something like application is not that aware enough. So we believe we come to this uh, market and sport, uh, all the sport platform have been educated sport facility as well. So we uh, have an advantage on this. And for the second question is regarding to the utilization of the uh, sport facility, everyone want to book at time. So uh, our strategy currently are mainly focusing on onboarding sport venue to start using our free trade package by having many, many more uh, sport venue in uh, Phnom Penh so uh, the user are able to book via partner on our application. A, a, sim a similar issue. Uh, it's a person that sprung to my mind, by the way. We've seen the idea of an app booking venues before. So my question is, you spoke to a number of people about this. Um, you've already got the app. You've already got some sign-ups. Two things. Your advertisers said they would be interested in doing so once you reach a certain critical mass of users. Right. My first question is, what is that number you're thinking of? And secondly, what is the most difficult part of this for you? What, what, what do you find is the hardest aspect of making this business work? So I'm going to talk about the uh, in advertisement first. Uh, the, the first one that easily I, I, I want to read it, uh, the Coca-Cola, they said it's only 3K to 5K user. Uh, but at the same time, the highest expectation from us is Decathlon, since they are a very big uh, e-commerce platform and sportwear provider, supplier, and they said it's uh, 15K to 20K, so they can reach on. This is a big number to us to, to uh, impress. 
and we accept the challenge and let's see. And second thing is that the hardest challenge to us is that we trying to change the uh, customer behavior both side on the user and as well as the sport venue. So to, to have a system that are very fit with the operation is not an easy one. We cannot design one system best one best and then apply to many sport venue, but we have to customize each of the system to meet their requirement and then they could work with us. This has been a very challenge for us because technical, in terms of technical, we are still young, we are expected to graduate soon, but we have the supervisor to help us there, but it's still a challenge to us. And on top of that, regarding uh, the in advertisement, we have been uh, additional to connect all of our partner as an in advertisement to our sport venue, not only focusing on in advertisement, but on the sport venue advertisement as well. Which means they can put their banner and somehow on the sport facility as well. Hi, uh, good morning. Uh, very interesting. Uh, and congrats, it was uh, quite well structured as well. I just had a um, very quick question because here you had shown the slide that the sports venues you are currently targeting is doing everything manually and they will go direct to the app. In your business plan, have you addressed change management for your sports venue? What have you thought about in terms of transition for them and or training the, the whole concept of change management? Did you discuss anything on that? Okay, so um, regarding to convert them from using the paperwork to a system, we believe it very hard. But as well as we come up with these packages, like I show you, uh, shown you before, as free trail providing them to feel the familiarity with our system, and we also make a design of our system regarding to mobile app that our sport venue suggested. Uh, after our beta testing, they feel like uh, the system is. Uh, hard to manage or somehow like some sport venue are not have their computer by their own or laptop so they have their own uh, mobile phone by anywhere anytime they can access via their mobile phone so we believe that in the future they can be able to access all this and change their behavior on using mobile phone to control their facility uh, to add on the, the training for sport venue to familiar with the system is quite short uh, we provide them a book uh, lift a book Guide, a guideline, and then uh, with the old training, we upload it on the YouTube and then we send them the link. So whenever we were not there, they could just easily access to it and they can find what they're struggling with. To add, uh, to add on, uh, for the system for the sport venue, when uh, the user, when the booking, uh, it, uh, the future, it will be integrated with Telegram. If uh, the user, the booking, it will be uh, sent to the Telegram account and, uh, and for the inventory, uh, system, uh, the, uh, the sport venue can be uh, scanned the QR code, yes. I like the fact that in response to Zori's question, you did mention you'd spoken to the other developers of previous projects to find out why they did not succeed or proceed with their project. Because one of the things we have to judge here is passion, passion to make this work. So you mentioned that some of them said they had to go overseas to study, etc. So how passionate are you in, in the sense of making this work? So, you know, the opportunity of going overseas to study, would you do that instead of this, for example? I mean, do you have passion over and above them? Is that what separates you from, from them? So regarding to passion, we put more than 100 passion to execute this project. So we have been launching our beta testing and as well as currently working on our 2.0 of Gala and introducing in the next semester. So even though our team got selected to be internship at Azita Group in Malaysia, she still be able to work online with us as well as come back to execute this Gala even further to become a super app. Believe it or not, uh, we still bootstrapping. We in a really a stage, so the co-founder there's no salary for us. So we're working for free as like for the first semester or second semester, and then we start to talking about the salary later on or the third semester. So if I was to offer you a, a scholarship to Harvard, you would knock it back, right, to do this instead? <laughs> <laughs> we believe so.
Thank you, Tim. That was a wonderful presentation. Are you sure you don't want to go to Harvard? It's nearly hungry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We are now down to our last team presentation for the morning session. Please welcome Fit from Paragon University. Thank you. Greeting judges, after a long morning, I hope you like our ice cream and enjoy the presentation. Cambodia exports around 0 0.5 billion US dollars, which are mainly the raw material to Thailand, while they're importing back more than 3 billion US dollars, which are mainly the finished goods back to Cambodia providing Thai people the job opportunities and, to and tons of profit from just turning our raw material into finished good. Meanwhile, our people here are jobless, seeking for job opportunity in the neighboring country. Judges, we have the raw material and enough workforce. Why don't we make it here and sell it here? Why don't we provide job opportunities and tons of profit to our own citizen? We, we founder, we like to take an initiative to transform Cambodia from an agriculture to an agro industrial country. Judges, ladies and gentlemen, we are food factory. We manufacture and sell the food products that are made from the local agricultural produce, which um, mainly coconuts, to serve the domestic demand. Our vision is to be a Cambodian business who shall present and sell franchise in both local and global market. We have the mission to enlarge the markets and uplift the demand of our local agricultural product, provide job opportunities, and promote the Cambodian reputation in Asian marketplace. Here is uh, uh, the snapshot of our coconut factories, or uh, sorry, coconut farm, and the production line in our uh, small factory. And this is our business model. So what we did is that we first chose coconut as a main ingredient to make a premium uh, uh, Italian ice cream called gelato with many creative flavor. And we gave it to several of our friends. They tasted it and they said it is delicious and the taste is unique. So on July 2021, we opened our first branch in TK Avenue in Tukok area to sell our gelato product with a price range that is comparable to the international brand. But after five months of operation, we have found out that we have a very low market share with only a, sm a single or few sales of dollars a day. So we do a face-to-face -face interview with 20 participants, including the teenagers and parents on the consumer behaviors and opinion on fifth gelato, because we want to understand more about our target customer, to know about the market from their perspective, to assess the level of our brand awareness and to receive their judgments on our fifth gelato. So the survey result found out that we are having three lacking points. The first point is that 18 out of 20 participants have heard about fifth gelato, but they didn't know what is gelato or, which pro or what product that we are selling. Second point, our, our customer, they, most of them prefer the international brand over the local brand because they believe that the international brand will provide the high quality ingredients and a standardized production process. And last but not least, our respondent also mentioned about the accessible area of our competitor, while five have only one branch. 
So we, did, we decided to make some validation point to our business model in which we make four validation. On the first point, we rebrand from fifth gelato into fifth cocoa, and then we make a new taste of ice cream, uh, which we switch from gelato into a coconut milk ice cream, the one that you have tasted here on the table. And then we also continue to develop and launch more coconut products. And last but not least, a very important one is that we switch ourselves from being a retailer to be a franchisor instead. But in order to achieve our goal, we have to follow a two-step process. So this is what we are currently doing right now, which is called the add-on concept, in which the F&B businesses of all sides can add on our ice cream package into their store in order to uh, have a new additional revenue stream from the existing customer. We believe that from this add-on concept, we can, it is a driver of the customer base, which is our dealer, so that we can sell more coconut product to them. And we believe that this, uh, this add-on concept will also fastly uh, make our reputation or branding known to uh, like Cambodian citizen. And then after we achieve the desired level of brand awareness, we will make our, um, continue to make our full franchise concept in which it will come from, uh, with different variants and more of creative coconut products. And so far, after launching this um, add-on concept for two weeks, we are currently having achieved the 99 dealer in which um, ranging from a very small coffee stall, mart, restaurants, and other F&B merchants. And this is some photo of um, our like this is uh, some photo of uh, our dealers. And to the uh, end customer, actually our ice cream is affordable and also healthier. So we target to customer at all age, to the one who loves sweet, the one who loves local product, and the one who has the allowance for food of at least hundred dollar per month. And talking about the market size, with a care cost of four percent. Uh, with a cake cost of 4%, Cambodia is expected to have a reach into the frozen food market, which is around 210 million US dollars in 2024, according to the Phnom Penh Post. So, uh, to which uh, frozen dessert is accounted for 25% or equivalent to 51.5 million US dollars in market size. And in the existing market, we can say that besides the affordable price, the local ingredients, the innovative of us, we also being more socially responsible than uh, compared to the international brand and other local brand, in which recently we have uh, the way donation to provide the financial support and also our product to 200 students in the rural area. And besides from this, what even makes us more unique is that to our end customer, they can receive the product that is freshly made with no added color, preservation, and smell. And to the, um, our dealer, which is B2B, they can receive the package of the ice cream. We provide them the uh, freezers and also a set of marketing mat material. It is like everything for them. And we also assure them with a sustainable supply and quick delivery as well. And uh, we do the marketing through our dealer and also do it for our dealers through the social media content such as in our own Facebook page, through the influencers, and also other food bloggers. So these are currently some of our partners, of the marketing partner, the delivery partner, and also other partners as well. And this is our milestone. So as you can see here in 2022, we can uh, distribute, we can, uh, do the R&D on our product of fifth coconut, uh, such as the jelly, the pudding, and also slushy. And we also can distribute it to our partner, which is now our dealer. And we are not only open into Siem Reap and Kampong Cham branch, but our dealer is everywhere in Cambodia. So we can say that within three months, we have outperformed our target in 2022 and looking forward to go more into the future as fast as possible. And talking about the revenue stream, we stream our revenue mainly from wholesaling our product to our dealers, and additional revenue stream from customers who visit our shops and also provide some catering service. But in the future, after we launch our full franchise concept, we also can expect a franchise and loyalty fee as well. 
So in this project, in the we can receive around 184. Uh, we can expect to receive around 184 net profit per year, which we will go into break even in the next five years. Okay. So this is uh, about our team. So we consist of four young entrepreneurs who are holding the entire operations and marketing by ourselves. And with the support of other staff from the sale, delivery, and also production team. So judges, ladies and gentlemen, support us to see more creative products, support us to support the local, and support us to transform our country from an agriculture to an agro industrial country. And if you are interested to know more about us or want to be one of our dealers, you can contact us via this contact information. Thank you. Thank you, team, for the wonderful presentation. And now I would like to invite the judges for the question session. Thank you so much for providing us a tasty snack before lunch, which maybe is uh, making my judgment biased. But it was an excellent presentation. Um, I have two questions, one on the business model and one on your uh, product. So the first question on the business model is can you explain why a little bit more, why you are aiming to do a franchise business? Because it seems to me like you have good traction with your distribution partners already. And for someone like a McDonald's, the reason I would franchise the business is because in theory, it takes, I would earn millions of dollars from a McDonald's. The branding is all done, the product is all done. Um, and the margin is very big, but as a new brand, that franchise offer is not the same. So what, first question is why franchise? The second question is on your unique product proposition. Um, if you can go back to your branding slide. Oh, uh, So if you look at what makes you unique, actually I can name other products which have unique flavors, which are convenient, which are healthy. So those are all great product attributes, but I can name other products that do the same. So I'm curious, what else, uh, how else would you brand your product? Thank you, judges, for the amazing question. So firstly, why franchise? Of course, we do franchising because we want to grow our business bigger, and we want to promote the local product to other people, and as well as make them have more job opportunity. And besides, we also provide them a lot of benefits, like us, um, a money and a product for them to sell. Yes, and we also provide a tasty one to our customer as well. And talking about in like from finance perspective, if you just only doing the wholesale one, it is good actually. But if you sell franchise, you will receive also a franchise fee and also loyalty fee, which look more sustainable for us. And especially for fifth, actually our product is just not only the ice cream; it's just not only the like pudding or jelly, uh, jelly or slushy. But we also uh, want to make some like freshly made. Um, Product like, for example, you can imagine like a burger bun that consists of a small ice cream, ice cream scoop in there and then we do the hot press bun. Something like that, that you really need to make it uh, when the customer order, when uh, we need to use machine and other stuff, which is more creative and yeah, something like that. So we want to bring all of those products into one place so the customer can go there and then they can enjoy the um, all the packaged food or also the food that are freshly made or immediately made as well. So this is uh, what we are thinking of in the domestic market and in the global market. We think that to sell franchise is even like, um, better than us just um, distributing our product into the market. That is why like, we actually want to promote our reputation and show the world that we are not only import, but we are also doing export on those products as well. And to answer to your second question is, what makes us unique is that, uh, oh, sorry. 
<laughs> Sorry, but okay. So what makes us unique here is that um, actually, if we compare our oh, sorry, if we compare our stuff to the international brand, we can see that we are unique because our first of all, our ingredients are freshly made. It is no added color and preservation, and we don't have any import tech as well. So we can say that we can, um, you know, like pass out all of those tech and then can earn more revenue and provide the job opportunity to our people. And then what even makes us unique is that to the customer. If you compare, for example, a coconut jelly into, uh, from Thailand and a coconut jelly in here, uh, when we don't add any preservation here, so it is a healthier choice for you. And for our like, business to businesses or business to dealer, we can say that we are in here providing them a very like, high profit where they need to spend only lower than $200 investment on all those stuff. So um, I can say that from this thing, they can receive the product quickly, they can have a sustainable supply because we are not doing it in a very small scale like family business, but we are doing it in the industry scale. So yeah, uh, it is more sustainable. So uh, for example, if sometime I don't do it, my staff will do it as well. So that's why it is more sustainable than the local business. I hope that answers your question. So I, I have um, a few questions. So. The, the differentiation is, is developing a brand. Uh, so um, so you, you pick three channels, wholesale, dealerships, and franchise. So for franchising, you have to have an established brand already, or it's gonna be very hard to, to get franchises. And I do want to know, like what, what uh, you talk to prospective franchisees and what did they say. Um, on the wholesale, it's hard to develop a brand because the end users really don't see it. So there's a challenge as the development brand on, on the wholesale part. On the dealers, it becomes a, 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 um, a question of quality control. How do you maintain the quality of your product with going through dealers? Now, it was interesting, I did catch that you are gonna provide to the dealers uh, uh, refrigerators. Um, I thought it was interesting because I have a friend, a Turkish friend who is selling yogurt. And he's trying to figure out why it lasts two weeks in his refrigerator, but only three or four days in, in the, the storage refrigerator. And I mentioned to him, maybe they don't have it at the right temperature. Uh, so, so he's gone back and find out is indeed, it wasn't at the right temperature. Sometimes the stores don't have it at the right temperature. Is this your, um, what you're thinking about on quality control? But, but, but for two questions, what did you get feedback from the dealers? And what did you get feedback from the franchisees? Uh, besides, uh, uh, above just they like it, the product and things like that. What was your feedback from them? Okay, so for me as um, a co-founder and also a shop manager, myself doing the customer service myself, I really get a lot of feedback from the customer. So actually to answer to your question about the franchisee, we are not now um, having the franchisee. We are having only the wholesale, which is our dealer. So in this case, we have received a lot of feedback from them in terms of like, um, how can they use the fridge or tell them the instruction of how to um, make or uh, scooping the ice cream and also how to put it, like how, how to put the ingredient in the right thing and other stuff and also like many other complaints. So for us, um, yeah, yeah, and also I wanna add on something that they also have concern about the duration of the ice cream and yeah, like basically just everything that concern during their business. Like for example, if uh, the electricity cut off for two hours, what happened? If the electricity cut off for two days, what happened? So the question has a lot of questions. And for us, we can say that um, we, when we go into, like, first of all, we place this package to them. We are uh, sending one or two of our staff there too, so that uh, they can do the contract and then our um, staff will tell them that we'll set the temperature, the right temperature in the fridge for them. And we will, um, put all of the product for them and tell them, oh, this, uh, when you uh, arrange it in this way, customer can see it on the way and something like that. So we provide them all of the instruction and then ongoing customer service if they have any question or any problem that uh, we really have to deal with. And like the fridge and other stuff, I can say that actually the um, ice cream freeze is not that when the electricity cut off for two hours, it's gonna have 
ice cream melted, but if you keep it for so long or something, I can give them the instruction that don't open it. Or also, if uh, it is very urgent, like two day electricity cut off, you can uh, bring some of the ice on to that one in order to make it sustainable. Because, you know, problem happen everywhere, but we are trying to solve it like, as much as possible. And um, another thing that I really want to mention about the question that you asked us that how can we make sure they uh, do the quality control of our product. So you can see here in the, um, our, here is the production line. So we have the, we are not working on man-made or something, but we are having the machine and also the uh, exact instruction on our staff to tell them that which amount should be put it, which amount or something like that. And then we also have someone who check or control or taste the ice cream each, in each version so that our ice cream will have a very like, correct quality control just like other international brand. We can assure you that. Oh. Uh, uh, yeah, thanks for the answers. Um, my question is, you, you start off with the presentation of, of making gelato, and now you're making ice cream, I assume. W what was the reason why you shifted your uh, strategy in building this product? Um, thank you for this amazing question. So as you can see, that gelato ingredient is very expensive, and the quality, we can keep it just for a while, unlike ice cream. So. Um, we decided to switch it to the ice cream because we can say that the taste is quite similar, but the ingredient price is, um, um, I mean, the gelato uh, ingredient is very expensive while ice cream is cheaper. Yes? The coconut ice cream that you made. Uh, okay, did, did you, just, just one more question. Did you, uh, when you did, uh, I mean, you switch because of the pricing and the ingredients, was there a survey to your existing customers, which one they prefer, the gelato or the, the current product now? So we can say that um, our customer in here, most people prefer ice cream because it is much cheaper compared to gelato while the taste are the same, just like I mentioned above. And most of um, our people, I mean, um, after changing from gelato to ice cream, we also have more product like coconut jelly, um, coconut pudding and coconut water or um, slushy and more. So currently we are not only focused on the gelato or ice cream, but more on coconut product. And I also want to add on, <laughs> uh, I also want to add on into this that um, actually when we do the gelato, our target customer are the one who are having a maybe higher income. But for us now, we target to generalize all Cambodian to eat it. So a very small scoop of coconut ice cream costs just 1000 And the cup in front of you costs only just $3,500, uh, sorry, 3500 real. <laughs> uh, so it is affordable to all Cambodian citizens here. Maybe 90% or 80% of the all Cambodian citizens here. That's why we, we do the wholesale and we want to make our business fit into Cambodian market. Uh, because if we use gelato, we use the imported product from uh, Italy, so it is so expensive. And like us, we, for us here, we make the coconut ice cream from the coconut, you know, yeah, something like this. So uh, coconut cream, so it is cheaper for us compared to other local too, because we have our own coconut farm. Uh, can, I, can I, I just want to ask this quickly, <laughs> a second. I want to, what, is is the, last what, is, what is the name? Tell me about why F fifth, what is that name? Why? why? Because branding is important. I, I want to know what that means. Um, so the name is come so randomly. I mean, firstly, we, 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 <laughs> we start by five uh, young entrepreneurs. I mean, we come up uh, in a group together and create this product. And we are lacking of the name and awareness. So we come up with the five one. It means high five. <gasps> and when you do high five, you, miss, you will know this name. Yes, that's it. And it looks cute as well. <laughs> Okay, guys, that looks like our time's up. <laughs> Thank you so much for the presentation. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. The MC is a little sad she don't get her ice cream. <laughs> okay. And that was our last student team for our morning agenda. And so our program will now be taking a short lunch break. Our volunteer have prepared lunchbox for all the student team and sponsor outside the hall. Please kindly follow them outside. For our awesome judges, we have organized a group lunch for everyone. So please kindly follow our coordinator and team. 
We will be back to hear more outstanding presentation from other student team at 1 p.m. We hope that everyone is, who is present and the audience who is watching our Facebook live stream have a refreshing lunch break. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you again this afternoon.